People with reasonable skills get great new opportunities due to globalization. What I was saying about job training and education for the poor also applies to the middle class. They, they have to keep their skills up to date. The nation sits down with Professor Eric S. Maskin, Nobel Laureate in Economics, for a discussion that focuses on the relationship between globalization and inequality, and how we can improve the gap. So you're in Thailand for the Japan ASEAN Bridges event, and you will be right. giving out lectures to young minds, and uh, also at the Bank of Thailand, right? That's right. I have seen a number of your um, speeches, lectures. You talk a lot about globalization and inequality. That's right. It has been many years, and it's, we are still on the same sub subject. That means not much has been changed, or there's some any, anything positive that we can look forward to? I think, I think so. I, I, you're right that I've been talking about it for a long time, and the reason I've been talking about it is that it's still a problem mm. that is with us. Inequality is still present, and in fact, in some countries, it's growing. Uh, so there's work that still has to be done mm. to solve the inequality problem. Nevertheless, um, there are places where progress has been made. And I'm, I'm happy to say that actually Thailand is, so far as I can tell, uh, is a problem, it, it, it is a place where uh, there has been improvement. So we're not talking just about the number, right? I mean, statistically, no. Well, so economists measure the uh, degree of inequality, the gap right. between rich and poor, by something called the, the Gini coefficient. Mm -hmm. And actually, Thailand has one of the highest degrees of inequality uh, in the world. Mm. That's not a good thing, but uh, it, that Gini coefficient has actually fallen. Mm. Uh, not dramatically, I would say, but, but significantly. Uh, in, in recent years. So that, that's a move in the right direction, I would say. So what do you think we have been doing kind of right that shrinking the gap? So I am not an expert on the, the Thai economy, but uh, I think it's pretty clear that one reason for this improvement is that education and skill training mm. has improved mm. so that people working uh, in traditional industries especially are now learning more up-to-date, more modern skills which enable them to earn a better income than was than was possible mm. uh, a decade ago or so. An another statistic about Thailand, which I, which I find uh, extremely encouraging, is that the, the number of people below the poverty line mm -hmm. has fallen uh, dramatically in just about 30 years. So, so it, it was the case not all that long ago that more than half of the population was in poverty in Thailand. Mm. Uh, and that figure has dropped to below 10%. So very significant improvement. And, and this has mostly to do with the, the fact that people are now able to get jobs which pull them out of poverty. Right. Uh, and, 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 and this has to do with education and the development of skills. So, uh, one of the things you prepared to talk about is the relationship between inequality and globalization. Right. And uh, if people have read or listened to some of your lectures, you would tell them the reason that you think um, globalization is part to blame for inequality? 
I do. So, so uh, let, let me say first that uh, I am not opposed to globalization at all because globalization in general has been a very powerful force for economic improvements. Thailand has improved dramatically as a result of globalization. Uh, China is now the second largest economy in the world, whereas 40 years ago it was one of the poorest countries in the world. And that difference is almost entirely attributable mm -hmm. to globalization. So globalization has been a very good thing on average for increasing a, a country's average prosperity. The problem with globalization is that the benefits have been very unequally distributed. distributed. Right. So uh, people, and, and, and this comes back to skills. Mm. People with reasonable skills get great new opportunities due to globalization. For example, if you speak English, mm. there is a whole world of jobs that are, that are open to you as a result of globalization mm. that would not be available if you didn't speak English. So you don't have to have incredibly complicated skills in order to benefit from globalization. But there are many people uh, who don't have skills and they have been left behind. They, they, they have not benefited from globalization. So, so the, the moderately and high, highly skilled people see their incomes go up. Mm. The unskilled people see their incomes stay the same. While everything gets more expensive. While everything gets more expensive. The gap between the skilled and the unskilled, as far as income goes, increases. I'm afraid is an important consequence of, of globalization. I, the answer is not to stop globalization, though. It's, it's, it's to attack the, the problem of inequality directly. Yes, and uh, from what you said, I would assume education is the answer. Yes, uh, education of a particular kind, uh, education which is directed towards skill acquisition, uh, giving people practical skills that they can use to improve their incomes. So if we focus on ASEAN region, which some of us uh, emerge as economy, some of us developing economy, do you see the challenge uh, in this region pretty much similar? of um, inequality and economic um, crisis, or some people wouldn't call it crisis, but uh, I think- I, I think it's too so strong great. to call it a crisis, <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, I, th I think basically all of the uh, uh, ASEAN countries have been having to deal with, uh, with income inequality and, and uh, Thailand probably more than most because Thailand's level of inequality is, is higher right. than, than most of its neighbors. Uh, however, uh, as I was suggesting, it, it, it has, the degree of inequality has been decreasing. In, right. in, and that's not true, for example, in China, just the opposite. Mm -hmm. In China, it's been, uh, it's been growing. So what do you think is the most challenging um, aspect of this issue? The most challenging aspect is that education and job training are expensive. Right. And someone has to pay for them. <laughs> and a country has to figure out how those investments in, in skill training uh, are going to happen. Typically, the workers themselves, unskilled workers themselves, can't afford to pay for their own educations. They're too poor for that. So, so we can't expect them to do it. But we also uh, can't rely on employers to do it. 
if I'm an unskilled worker and you're an employer, yes, you, you could train me to do your job uh, and then I would be able to do it. But the problem is that once you have paid for my job training, I don't have to work for you. Right. I could go to work for your competitor, and in which case your investment in me is lost. Right. And so employers are going to hesitate mm. before they're willing to make an investment in training unskilled workers because those investments are not secure. They, uh, and so we can't expect employers to solve the problem either. So that leaves the question, who, who is going to pay for the investment? And, and, and I think that the answer has to be uh, government. Right. Uh, what government must do is to find a way to either train workers directly, and one way they can do that is subsidizing workers so that they can go back to mm. school mm. And, and learn skills. Uh, but another way is for government to give employers more incentive to train the, to, workers. To train the workers. They can do that right. by uh, giving tax breaks to companies or by giving companies subsidies according to how many workers they train. But one way or another, I think it's essential that government gets heavily involved in these training investments because they're not going to happen without government. They're, they're not going to happen automatically. Then it's involved another part of this equation, which is the policymakers. So we have to hope that we get the policymakers that know what they're doing or sincere about what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, al this is always a problem with government, <laughs> making sure that, you're, that the leaders right. uh, are, are competent and also well-intentioned. I must say that since I've been studying the problem of inequality, which, which has been for close to 15 years now, um, I have seen many innovative and effective government programs mm. develop in different parts of the world. And so there, there is now a much bigger stock of knowledge mm. about how to fight inequality than there was, uh, than there was 15 years ago. And, that, and that's cause for uh, reassurance, I think. So we just need the governments that are really serious about fixing this issue. Right, and, and, and I'm confident that if government is serious, they can deal with the problem. The, the problem is definitely solvable. It's not, mm. it's not an impossible mm. uh, problem to, to uh, reduce inequality. We know how to do it. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of political will uh, actually doing it. We have been talking a lot of uh, inequality, and when we talk about inequality, we will think about the poor and the uh, lower class right. of people. Should we, we, should we be worried, too, about the middle class? Like, if they get trapped, they cannot move up, and some of them actually falling down? Oh, absolutely. The, 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 the middle class is the, the bedrock of a society. Getting sandwiched. Uh, you can't, you, you can't have a, a successful modern economy without a, uh, a robust middle class. Even the middle class has to um, keep up with the times. We, we live in a world with very, with very rapid technological change, and that means that the nature of jobs which are right for technology. The current technology is changing all the time. So even, even people who are doing reasonably well, mid middle class people, um, need to revise their 
skills. Right. You, you, they can't just sit there and expect that uh, they will continue to prosper. They, what I was saying about job training and education for the poor also applies uh, to, the, to the middle class. They, they have to keep their skills up to date. Well, thank you very much for your time today. I think, um, yes, we have to go back to unskilled training. No, no, not just unskilled training. Skilled training for middle class middle too. Class too. Yeah. Just right. to make sure that everybody get, keeps up. Keeps be up. Be because, of, because of the rapid pace with which the, the economy is changing. <laughs>